Hi everyone, happy Friday. Um, here we are again with my uh, journey through my cat coloring book collection. Um, as you may know, if you've already been um, watching my videos, John, the Bibliophile Colorist here on YouTube is his, uh, his channel name, and I are hosting the Cat Coloring 2020 tag for Catober Coloring, excuse me, Catober Coloring 2020 for October, and um, I'm going to insert my big stack of picture, stack of books, hopefully here. I actually hope if I remembered it this week. Um, but yeah, cat themed books are not surprisingly the majority of my coloring book collection. And in honor of our tag this month and our color along, I did want to try to go through them if I can. So we are in part three of our collection and I am doing these on Fridays. Do note that if I get other books that aren't cat related, I've been doing flip throughs of those earlier in the week. I actually have one from Tuesday for Kawaii Horror Grayscale, and then Wednesday is a Happy Halloween one. So if you haven't seen those, um, I did do some non-cat coloring books for some of you that may not be a fan of these. So anyway, let's get started. This is actually probably the second video I will have out today. You get two from me today. The other one, I think I'm going to do an Amazon Prime Day haul video. Um, haven't done it yet because I'm doing things backwards today, apparently. <laughs> so um, this may be the second video you see from me today. First book up is a um, new purchase. I actually got this this week and figured I would roll it in today. This is not a new release. It's just a book I happened to get. Um, Colorful Crafts is <laughs> the channel uh, that uh, enabled me for this. She, uh, for her September colorings, had a picture from this book and it was freaking adorable. And so I was like, I put it on my list, but then I was like, I just really want it. So I know, I know, mindful buying. I'm, I'm trying guys, I'm trying. <laughs> Anyway, this is really cool coloring in book two. So it looks like it's part of a series. This is the Cool Cats book from that collection. So it looks like they have different ones. They have, oh, the book one. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's showing is, yeah. Anyway, there's like Dream Homes. Color the Catwalk, Fashion Animals, um, looks like there's a bunch of different ones, but of course I got the Cool Cats one because I'm drawn to cats. Big surprise, look at the channel name. Here is the title page. This is Amazon printed, 8.5 by 11, looks like one-sided. Here's a copyright, looks like this was printed, uh, published in 2015 says text and illustration copyright Kyle Craig publishing so it's got a little bit of info over here I guess that's the artist I don't know I'm not 100% sure on that one I the number of pages any information I can add to these I will put down in the description along with the course timestamps if you don't want to go through all of them and want to see particular ones so here we go they are single-sided and there is just something I find hilarious. Why is my alarm going off? I don't know. Anyway, there's just something I find hilarious about cats in like real people situations or in real people, like people clothes, real people, like, come on Michelle. Anyway, there's just something about cats in like human clothes or in human situations I just find adorable. That's really any animal, but I mean, in particular, of course, I love the cat ones. Ooh, I, actually, that might be a good one. So, along with Cattober Coloring 2020, I've also been trying to color prompts for the art prompt Cattober with a K, not to be confused with our hashtag. And that one has themes for every day. I'm going to admit I am behind. 
<laughs> I was doing really well coloring the daily themes and then Maggie got sick last weekend and that all went out the window but my plan is instead to just hit the goal that by end the end of the month I've colored all the prompts that's that's my new goal so whether we do it or not I don't know but I don't want to abandon the challenge entirely so we're going to modify it slightly and this book is freaking adorable and hilarious I love the simplicity of the images I can just color the image I can add a background if I so choose the difference between the cat heads and the human hands is a little is a little disconcerting for me but it's still super cute I like it These are just really cute pictures. And like I said, they're simple. I can do some blending if I want to. These would be good for me for pencils. Um, I, as you guys know, if you've been following the channel for a while, I do have hand and wrist issues and um, coloring with colored pencils. I really like this one. I could totally see doing that like a 90s colored sweater with like um, purples and pinks and blacks I think that's the one that colorful crafts did gosh I wish I could think of her name I bet she's mentioned her name and I really hope that was my husband and not somebody knocking on the door I like his upside down glasses Ooh, this reminds me of a book we're going to be looking at in a little while too uh, cats like cats with hats or something to that nature anyway super cute book I just couldn't resist I know I still have my massive ugly looking bruise on my wrist I'm sorry about that I honestly don't know where that one came from I like the like wild animal print on some of these I think that's that's cool anyway straightforward book very cute I can see myself trying a lot of different things in here and like I said it's not a huge time investment if I don't want it to be and so if I wanted to use colored pencils in here I wouldn't be having to use them for very long so it would make it a good colored pencil book as well hey city Sid Sid is not feeling well today guys um, she is uh, still having problems with her throat I'm not sure if it's sinus drainage because she's not draining you know through her nose or anything but her throat's sore and she's nauseous and we've given her antibiotic shot and she's still doing this so I don't know just I don't seem to have very good luck with weekends lately with cats getting sick so hopefully she won't have to go to the vet this weekend we're trying um, some prednisone with her and some serenia for a few days to see if it's just irritation where we need to deal with so anyway any thoughts for her Maggie is doing great by the way he is really bouncing back and like I said about the time he started acting more normal she started acting like she didn't want to eat mostly she doesn't want to eat and obviously that's a problem because she's my smallest cat at like she's losing weight so she's at like seven and a half pounds so anyway all right Cat Spirits Coloring Book by Christina McAllister. I don't have any more of her books, but obviously I saw this one. I do love her art, but <laughs> just there's so many artists. I, I get like one of their books and I really like it. And it's just, I don't, <laughs> if I got all the books I wanted, I would need, I would need another bookcase the same size I have. And it still probably wouldn't be enough. Anyway. Her art's really cool. She has a distinct style and her grayscale is just fabulous. I love it. This is an Amazon printed book. I think John colored in this earlier. Um, he did a part one and part two in this book. Um, if you want to head over to his channel, I'll put it in the description as usual. Um, but he did a two-parter coloring in this book and it turned out gorgeous as usual. So here is copyright information, some coloring tips. 
Even areas that are almost black, tinning with a transparent color will look better than leaving it gray. There's a grayscale test sheet at the back of this book. This is really cool because this actually gives you some grayscale tips too. It's not just, um, not just general coloring tips. It's grayscale tips as well. Amazon printed single-sided paper. She does put like copyright information and then I think this is her website. It says gypsymystery.com. Anyway, these are adorable. I keep seeing, like, I see this book and I'm like, I want to color in this book. And then I see other people coloring in it and their pictures look great. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I don't know why I'm intimidated by this book, but I am. I am. And it shouldn't be. This, this could be one I could just straight color in. And because of the fabulous grayscale, it would look amazing. I love this picture. Love this picture. Love it. <sighs> That's one of the problems of going through my collection, guys, is I start going through these, and John's colored this before. Somebody just posted on Instagram with this one for the tag for the month. I wish I could remember who it was. I haven't had a chance to comment, I think. And it's just gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. I love it. But she does have a number of other books in this type of style. If you like the style, if you like the grayscale, then maybe cats aren't your thing, which, you know, I, I <laughs> may not, I, I, empath I sympathize, but I don't necessarily understand personally. But if cats aren't you th your thing, but you like her art style, she does have other books out there. This is the one that John did this week, too, so you guys want to head on over there he used markers and glitter gel pens and it looks gorgeous all right i think he's done that one too and it turned out beautiful it's funny i think a lot of times i get in a similar mindset of other people of like my friends on YouTube I will look at a picture and I will think I'm going to color that picture and or I'm going to order that book and sure enough somebody else has the same thought I do it's really funny like how a lot of us get very similar um, like we have similar in inspired moments in terms of what we color or what books we purchase I, I find that funny doesn't happen all the time but it happens a little and often enough that I find it I find it interesting I guess it's the whole great minds think like mentality and I'm not talking about new releases I mean that's a given but like books that have been out a while it's funny how out of all the books we have to choose, a lot of us will choose the same book in, in a very similar span of time or the same picture. And it's, I just like said, I find it funny. Because there's a lot of books out there. I really like this. This is a grayscale testing sheet. You don't see this very often, but this is really nice. Um, in grayscale books they don't normally have these but she provides that just so you can test some of your colors and see how they do so here is her website here's some more of her books i've seen a lot of people color out of magical beauties um that's another one of her books that's similar to this i think that says Espiritus, mandala carnival lost lumina i I think I've heard she is planning to put out another volume of this. I believe. I believe I've heard this. I don't know when, though, so I'm not going to say for sure. Okay. Book two. Book three was a recommendation. Oh, I should have went back in my comments. Maybe I can do that now while I'm yapping about it. Somebody commented a long time ago about this book. And um, I like to try to give credit. So let me see if I can come up with it. If I just do a search, maybe. Um, 
she mentioned this book because not only does it have awesome pictures but part of the proceeds from the book go into um go towards helping out big cats there we go september girl 70 um was her youtube handle i'm not sure i haven't seen her comment recently hopefully she's still around um she recommended this year ago I got it because it is a gorgeous book and then like I said um, this actually goes towards Big Cat Rescue as well the proceeds so super cool not you know cat tober coloring doesn't have to just be uh, little kitties it can include big kitties as well really pretty page there so this in actually is um, some drawings of some of the uh, cats at Big Cat Rescue I'm I believe so so you get like a drawing of them and then a lot of them have like a pattern to them as well it's really nice paper it's um, a little bit shiny a um, little bit thicker it's definitely thicker paper it is single-sided yeah I forgot to say all that but at this point I really am only going to call it out I guess if it's a uniquely sized book is probably the best way to do that um, but I think this paper would handle marker really well and watercolor as well as um, it is really smooth so like softer color pencils too would probably do really well I love these time types of cats um, Caracol I, I'm mispronouncing that I'm sure but they have the really weird wild like long tips at the end of their ears they're really cool looking Nabisco <laughs> Oh my goodness, it looks so much like Annie. I'm telling you, Annie looked like a little mini bobcat. It was just, every time I saw her, especially with that, um, especially with that tail that wasn't a full-size tail, um, she just, I don't know, she reminded me so much of a bobcat when she walked and her coloring and how she looked. She just looked like a little mini version. Anytime I see a bobcat now, it reminds me of her. Anyway, these are super cool. Like I said, I've not tried coloring in it yet, but I would like to. I would like to say I'm going to do it this month, but I know there is a um, wildcat prompt and maybe one other type of prompt in the uh, Cattober with a K. 31 days of cats so this might be where I go for that quite a few pages in here too Zeus I know I know there's some controversy around Big Cat Rescue and just all I ask guys is don't talk about it in the comments please I just I know it's controversial, but at the end of the day, these cats are involved and, you know, everybody's got their opinions about it and I just, we're just going to leave it at that. So yeah, just kind of refrain from that in the comments, please. Just, <laughs> basically I'm not warning you, I'm just cautioning. Let's not, let's keep this positive, right? pretty trio chaos boy that would have been a great backup name for Leroy would have been chaos I think even Annie she didn't quite have the super long tips on her ears but she had a little bit on her I love the tigers they're just drawn so well in here now some of these animals have probably since passed since this was published but I guess these were a lot of the cats they had at the time that this was published oh sorry I forget I guess you can see the shininess of the paper so I love the tiger lily ones pretty Hermione Yeah, that's pretty much how my cats see themselves as king and queens of their do domains. 
for a lot of these I kind of wish they had done the whole cat maybe maybe more of the whole cat and less of the pattern would be like my one my big critique of this book if you're not if you're not a fan of patterns then you may not like this but Chumanji that'd been a good name for Bagheera too I think I do like the variety of the cats though it's not just tigers and it's not just bobcats and it's a whole bunch of different ones Plus, I mean, with wildcats, you if you're coloring them similar to how they are in the wild, you usually are using a lot of neutrals and oranges and whites and blacks. So the patterns give you kind of a chance to add a little bit of different color to it as well. So You probably remember this one if you've been subscribed probably, I can't remember when I got it, maybe August, July. Um, this will look a little familiar. This was a unique find on Amazon that I just happened to come across. I had not seen this flip through on other channels. And uh, it is the Cat Color Coloring Book by B. Kilbin. I think that's right. Yeah. B. Klebon. Excuse me, Klebon. There's a L there. And um, there are 22 in here. B. Klebon is a artist who... Um, has created these paintings that are you know these cat related paint paintings and um they're actually they actually put them into a coloring book so that you can color them as well which i think is super cool and i've got to go look at more of his work because these actually show what the original paintings look like they're on the front and the back cover there but of course you can color them however you like in the coloring book. Who is hovering around now? Scamper. So here's the intro. Uh, it talks about the artist B. Klebun, um, Big cat lover. He made hundreds of pictures of them. You'll find 22 of his cat paintings in this coloring book. They're shown as small reproductions on the inside front and back covers. Of course you can color however you like. Anyway. These pictures are freaking adorable so this book this isn't like white paper it's kind of more of an off-white kind of ivory color just as a heads up they are single-sided though the paper is fairly smooth a little bit thicker definitely thicker than like amazon printed paper so but these pictures y'all oh, i love these pictures love them they are some of them are really funny like this one and i could totally see like leroy doing that outside if when he was an outside cat like chasing the leaves this one where he's in the snowsuit oh my gosh and like i said if you're ner if you're like me and sometimes you get overwhelmed with color choices you can always look at the reproductions they have on the covers and that'll give you some, that might give you some inspiration so these pictures are just funny they're cute i just love them and they do have a little bit obviously you've got a lot of shading on the cats and then of course he's also added in some different shading as well so these you could just add color to. You don't necessarily have to do a lot of shading if you don't want to, which I think is super cool. Love that one. That's, I tell you here lately with the finicky eaters, it feels like this. Like there's all kinds of bowls in the house with different types of food, which is difficult because I'm trying to get the cats that need to eat to eat. Ugh. Here it goes again. I must have set the alarm to go off two days in a row instead of one day. But um, I'm trying to get the finicky cats to eat, and then I'm trying to keep the cat that needs the cats that need to lose weight out of it. And it the combination is not working well. So here it looks like the cat's making dinner. To you really start looking at the ingredients he's got, and then you really start to wonder what he's doing with all this. Like he has his tails light here. I think that's cute. And they're all posing for the picture. <laughs> I 
Yeah, my cat would not be getting any water. Like, forget that. I love all the birds sitting around glaring at him because he's in their bird bath. I don't know. I just, I this book just really charmed me. It's one of those books I'd love to just flip through and look. I don't know. I, I haven't even looked up, like, if prints of these are available and stuff. Which, if I have these and I color them, I can obviously take them out and frame them myself. This one is some real life mess here with cats. That is exactly how my mornings go. <laughs> there is some realness there. And then you've got, so you've got some uh, real life cat situations, then you've got some cute little fantasy ones. Can you imagine if cats had wings? Oh my gosh. Like King Kong cat here. And they're all landscape as you notice. And then they give you a page if you want to draw and color your own picture. This would work as a test page as well, I think. So, all right. <laughs> Hopefully that'll be the last alarm y'all got to hear today. Jeez, Leroy. Boy, I wish I could easily move this camera around and show y'all. He has got that leg jacked up and he is just clean it, cleaning those toes. I don't know. It's funny to me. Sorry. I have to take a drink. Um, So here's a unique one, too. Um, I've had this one for a while and I haven't done anything with it. Big surprise. This is Amazon printed. Marie Catoinette, Kitty Wigs presents a cautionary tale of excess. A historically imaginative adult coloring book by Julie Jackson. Illustrations by Paul Labadi. Labadi. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what that means. It, the illustrations are by Paul or... Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. They are all single-sided. We also have Glamour Puss, The Enchanting World of Kitty Wigs. Maybe I should go look at that one as well. How have I not looked for this yet? This is a 2016 printing, by the way. Why is that so blurry? My goodness. The text here. You want to pause and look at it. I don't know if there's similar ones in that one or not. Ice Camper. Introduction by Chris Jackson. Do this. The text is a little hard to read. And here we go. So we have cat heads with like just crazy ridiculous wigs on top of them. And I love them. Just love them. Hi Scamper. Would you like a wig? We're trying to look at this book. Y'all should have known it wouldn't be one of my videos if we didn't have a cat cameo. Anyway, some of these are, like said, just insanely crazy. So we have a harp with some angels on it. We have cupcakes, or no, those look like little, um, oh, what are they called? Anyway, little, like, desserts or whatever. We'll just... Licking the lips in anticipation. Now, some of these aren't wigs. They're just, uh, just individual drawings. But those are nice, too. I like those. Super fancy. I don't know. This is like the book I just showed y'all, which is why I grouped these together. It's just so, um, it's so cute, and I love the drawings so much. I mean, I want to color them, but I also love just looking at them. Like, this one's a birdcage. That one should be licking its lips, too, I would think. But, anyway, these are just super adorable. And the ex I like that the expressions on the cat's faces change and stuff too. And again, these aren't aren't super over the top complicated pictures. 
you do have some shading on them so you could just do a straight color or you could bring in some shading of your own as well love the weather vane the little puppet theater though nobody <laughs> the the little puppets look pretty uh pretty rough there <laughs> like the little tail there that's pretty much what my cats would do and they'd probably get stuck She's got little seahorses. I love the addition of the fan. I like this one a lot. This reminds me of Wesley, who is what I call a not my cat. He's a feral cat that I feed. Reminds me a lot of him. And I just, I love the, the fancy, the fanciness. Because you could just keep him black and white and then really enhance that. This one where there's a ship coming out of the, the hat with the little uh the little cannons i like that a lot but yeah no, not super complicated pictures something you could do easily in you know an hour or two hours if you so choose you could add a background if you like i love his little uh, mustache that was added those look like the little things you put like they used to put on like the ends of turkeys or whatever looks like some fruits and veggies up there too there should be a turkey up there i think but like this one with the whale and they're jump they're abandoning their rowboat i think there's a piano like it's supposed to look like a piano top and then there's an actual little piano there with some feathers i don't know Y'all know I'm drawing to some pretty ridiculous. If it's got cats in it, I'm already you've already got me on your side. So all it takes is a little bit of uniqueness to really win me over. I'm not I'm not difficult to please, is I guess what I'm saying. <laughs> Here's about us. Bring that up too, so you can pause it if you like to read. Just the text is really small. Kittywigs.com. I wonder if that's still a site. Yo, know, these older books that have websites in them, sometimes, you know, that it they don't use the site anymore. So Alright, so you have probably seen this one recently on some channels. Um, I'm trying to think who just did a flip through of this one. I was just on her channel and I don't remember. Anyway um a couple people have flipped through this one this is this was at um ollie's i think it was last year and a lot of us snapped it up i had never seen it before when i got it at ollie's and i have to say to me this is one of my favorite ollie's finds um it's metamoselle's cats i'm probably really not saying that right but this is a little different than a standard eight and a half by eleven. Let me grab the Cat Spirits book to show you. It is longer and it is shorter. These are double sided pages. I actually bought two copies and I'm using one um, where I can just put marker in it. Yeah, this is the one where I'm doing pencil and and stuff that will be okay on double sided paper. But yeah, this was a great find at Ollie's for like two bucks. And that's why I got two copies, because I just love it. Love it. One of my favorite um, unique cat books to just kind of look at. This stands for uh, two different illustrators. And I'm just going to point at their names and not try to say them, because I'm not going to do them right. You do have a colorful inside cover here, if you like. I think I did try out some gel pens. I think that's what you're seeing there with the bleed through. I was trying out gel pens to see how they would do as well. Yep. So I did the uh, this intro type page here with the copyright and stuff. I was mostly testing. Um, I used gel pens for the leaves over here. I think I used like Tombow's or a water-based marker for the kitty. 
I wanted to see how those, if any of those would bleed through. And as you can see, the water base did bleed through and the gel pens definitely did. So um, if, you, if you like using any of those, I would recommend some caution on this paper or putting down like um, gesso or something on a page before you use them. This side was all pencil, um, I believe. Yeah. Yep. And then I, I can't remember. I think I used a water base marker there and it did that one didn't come through, so but this was all pencil and then I used chalk pastel on the rest and it seemed like it did just fine. This side I think I was testing out pencils and of course I didn't write down what they were, or did I? Oh I did. Okay, so like here's Prismacolor. I made teeny tiny little no notes. Go me. Uh, Prismacolor, Arteza, Black Widows. I have no idea what that one is. Castle Arts, uh, Guanghui, which is also known as Wanshui, Sergeant Arts, and Fa Faber Castell Polychromos. And I think the Prismacolors gave a really rich. Looks like they have a really rich color, though the, no, that's F, that's Fila, excuse me. The Filas look pretty good, too. So anyway, I was doing some testing there. So, if you were curious. Started this page, I think I started this as a color in chat, once upon a time. And this is uh, Amazon Basics. Hopefully, whenever I get around to finishing these pictures... You can't really see them. There we go. Once I get around to finishing these pictures, hopefully I'll remember what I used. But these are just really cool. Um, this is just really cool art. Again, a little bit unique. Um, a little bit different. Golly, this book is so big, it is hard to get it fully in the screen. There we go. So we got chess cats. And it feels like each of the pages kind of have a similar theme, like, you know, of course this one has birds and this one's in a cage. I think I was using Crayolas, um, not the standard Crayolas, but like the Artist Choice or whatever, and when I was starting on that one. So yeah, I have a lot of um, whips in this one, <laughs> as you can see. A lot of these are double page layouts. Now my watch is yelling at me because I haven't gotten up from my chair in a while. Got some rain. I'm not gonna lie, the feathered cats do wig me out a bit. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't understand that, but like, I I would say the feathered cats, um, if I ever get around to possibly completing this book, the feathered cats will be the last thing I do if I ever do them. I just, mm, I don't know. It's you ever just see something and it just makes you uncomfortable and you're really not sure why? That's that's me and the feathered cats. I just mm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it. I think I was doing marker on this one in the other copy of the book I got. Marker seems to do really well on this as well. Just like I said, you may you'll lose what's on the back side of the page due to bleed through. This is cute. I really like this one. Again, it's funny what what appeals to you one time you flip through the book and then if you flip through it later, what else um, draws you in. But yeah, most of the time the two drawings on either side, if it's not a double page layout, generally have a similar theme. So you would you could do them together. Anyway, super cute. I've not tried paint. This picture would be a good one um, to do like a black acrylic paint background. Or here. Probably like an acrylic paint or wash would be interesting to try in here to see if that would give any issues. I bet you could get by with that and it would work well. Because this is, I mean, these are some pretty big pages, so these would probably take a while. Man, what it, is it about the feathered cats? I just, just, it's, it's just not right. Like, that one's so weird. This one, I don't, this one should wick, squick me out more than this one, I would think, but it doesn't. 
I don't know. Anyway, I also played around with um, some chameleon markers in my other book as well in these feathers. Now see, this one's fine because the cat itself is not a feathered cat. This is just, it's just not right. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look, I never said I made any sense. That would be a fun one to color, like, all the different colors of my cats. And the ones, ones here now and the ones that have been here, so. That would be cool. Slowly pushing the book up for some reason. Yeah, I would say, I mean, unless you're using markers, this is probably not a super quick um, coloring kind of book. It's not super detailed, but just do the size of the pages and that a lot of these are two page layouts. It probably would take you a little bit of time. So, and some of these are kind of patterny type pages like this one, but I don't mind it. It's not, I don't know how to explain it. It's not as patterned as I've seen other books. There's at least a little more variety to it. Love this one with the different little cat heads on the flowers. This one's a cool picture where they're hanging out to dry. Yeah, see, this other stuff's fine. It's just the feathers. It's just the feathers. The camel cat's fine. I don't know, y'all. I guess if somebody put out a whole book of feathered cats, that might be the one book, cat book, I wouldn't really have a lot of interest in. <laughs> so we found it, y'all. We found, <laughs> like, if it was just nothing but this kind of stuff, yeah, no. I think we found it. This one really bothers me. I just don't, I don't like it. And this is leaves, it's not feathers, but I, yeah. So yeah, we found it, y'all. We found the one cat book I wouldn't buy. So this side, actually, um, this gives you a little bit of a thumbnail. And yeah, each double page has a theme, even if it's not a full double page layout. They all have themes. And then I did a little testing here, and of course I didn't write what I was testing, so. So these do have names to them, which is super cool. And then you've got the back cover that's colorable too. So, there we go. Moving right along, you want to talk about a grayscale book that intimidates me. <laughs> Anything by Ruth Sanderson is, um, she's an amazing artist, um, but her books are a bit intimidating to me. I saw this one though and I just couldn't resist y'all it just the the story everything and I love this so much there's actually like a kid's book out that's what this is from so here is the actual storybook that I had to get as well big surprise and so it's by Ruth Sanderson and it's an actual storybook and it, and it has you know, full color in it, so you could color the grayscale like the storybook if you want. So, I think that's super cool. I had to get that, of course. Um, but this is the the grayscale coloring book version of that storybook. It is Amazon printed, I believe. Yep. So there you go. She does have other illustrated books and other grayscale books as well. And then this is your nameplate page. I believe all these are single sided so that you can um, use marker if you so choose. Um, though she does say she prefers using colored pencil. And uh, here's some notes to colorist. Do, do, do. There, maybe you can read a little better. Talks about how her illustrations are from the book I just showed you. So these are the illustrations. It's not the actual storybook. If you want the full storybook with the whole story in it, um, you'll need to get the, the book like I did. So. But this has all the illustrations. So again, you can color them like what's in the storybook or you can color them differently. 
but these are gorgeous. I I love Ruth Anderson's um, coloring books. I love her grayscale. It's um it's a lot more elaborate, kind of similar. Um, I wouldn't say Christina McAllister's grayscale is elaborate, but you do have different levels of grayscale, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So like Jade Summers is an easier grayscale where you'd be more apt to <laughs> love that they're at the table. Um, that would be my husband look on his face if we did that. But um, like Jade Summer, it's more, you don't have a whole lot of complex details usually, though their Graceful Art Nouveau book is pretty detailed. So for the most part, theirs is a little more simple. Um, Christina McAllister's, I think, is a little more complex just because of the different details she has. Ruth Sanderson grayscale is probably, if you if you had expert level grayscale, I would say Ruth Sanderson's is expert level grayscale because I could use markers here, but I'm like her, I almost would want to use pencils just because of all the detail work here. My fear every time I come down the stairs is they're going to get underfoot. This really, I mean, like, <laughs> this could be our house. And maybe not, it's not quite as fancy looking, but we're just talking about the sheer number of cats here. I think this would be a good challenge for me at some point. I don't know about this month. I've got a lot. The look on this guy's face in these pictures, this is like, this was probably the looks my husband had when he first moved in. Yep. He still gets these kind of looks on occasion. I think. <laughs> I love the variety of cats she has in these pictures too. She's got like tabbies and siamese and rag dolls and tuxedos and just all kinds of different kitties. I love it. I love it. <laughs> he looks like he is kind of done with it for the day. He's really cute. Yeah, I, I haven't even read the storybook yet. I should. Uh-oh. That is never a good sign. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Would be the reaction t in this household. <laughs> oh my gosh. Floof suits, as my friend Robin, who fosters cats in Alabama, um, likes to call it. They're donning their floof suits. Oh my gosh. Aww. And then they become friends. Super cute. Yeah, see that's more playful than freaked out, so. Oh, he's happy. He has his dog now. And they all get along. I think that's from the front cover. This would probably be a good, like, good, uh, work, work my way up kind of page. Because I could do the different pictures in different ways if I want to. So here's a little bit about Ruth Sanders. I have one other of her books. I think it's, a uh, maybe the fairies one? So, she does have a Christmas grayscale as well. Let's keep that in mind. Yeah, used to be called Create Space, but now I don't know what's actually called now. We're just going to call it Amazon printed. From here on out, just to avoid that constant name change. This was also recommended to me um, a while back from, oh my goodness, I haven't talked to her in, in, in an age, y'all. Like, it's just... Um, Oh, 
Where does she go? I can't remember her name. Come on. Anyway, this is called Minka's Journey, and this was suggested to me by Tammy. Tammy's her name. Haha, <laughs> I remember. Uh, Tammy recommended this one to me, and I had never seen it before. Um, it's called Minka's Journey, a coloring storybook by Catherine Benante. And this is what the back looks like. There's 32. There's bl They're one-sided. It is Amazon printed. But Minka's Journey, it's it's supposed to be this black and white cat's, I'm assuming Minka, like she, I, I guess she's dreaming, so she's kind of just working her way through her dreams. Here's a little bit of information. This was copyright 2015. Another one, I ha and it says minkasjourney.com, which I have not been to that website. So, What's cool about this is you get double page layouts in this book, which is unusual for an Amazon printed book. Um, but the sides, with the exception of this one, um, they're all one-sided. So you have your double page layouts but they are one sided so you can use your marker and you don't have to worry about bleed through and then here's some blank pages there the only other book i have that i actually remember this is in the uh, spectacular halloween book i sh i showed y'all earlier i think at the end of september i love this one with the little creatures And this and that's the way this is. It's all double page layouts because it's kind of telling a story. I guess as she travels through the world. It's just it's so cute. And you can color Minka however you want, like you can color everything else. Um I it shows her on the front as a black and white cat. And when I got this book, it made me think of Felix, who was my very first kitty I ever got. And he is a black and white cat. He was a black and white cat. So this kind of made me think uh, this would be a great book. I could color Minka like Felix, which would be very similar. And um, do this book kind of as a tribute to him. So I've not colored in it yet. As you can see, these are... Um, not crazy detailed layouts, but there is some detail to them. So I would probably use marker and then like some fine liners or gel pens for some of the detail work. Beautiful art though. Really like it. This is another one I have not seen around, which it is a little bit of an older book, and that's probably why. I'm sure people covered it when it first came out, and then things got kind of quiet. So now all the pictures have Minka in them, um, and these are, it's still a double page, but I mean you could treat these like single pages too if you wanted. I think Tammy said she had this one and she was going from start to finish, which I thought would be kind of, which would be really cool to do. I love this one where they're all snoozing. See, as much as I like that idea, also there are certain pages in here that appeal to me more than others, so I don't know if I'll go front to back. Here they are having a good old, good old fashioned uh, hoot na nanny, looks like. <laughs> Good old dance party. And then a till next time. I don't know if she has other books. I don't know if there are other books about Minka. Um, I just know I saw this one and I was like, oh yes, this is perfect. And so I had to snap it up. So there you go. Now, the rest of the books are all going to be by the same artist who has become easily one of my favorite artists. And that is Eva Carrera, if I'm pronouncing her name right. Hopefully I am. Um, but every book I see of hers that has cats in it, I am instantly just in love with it. In love with it. They're all Amazon printed books. This is Cats Around the World. 
And I just, you remember me saying I like cats. Hang on, let me take a drink. There, I paused it so you wouldn't have to hear me slurping. Um, I've told you I like seeing cats in like human-like situations and in human clothes and stuff. I always think that's cool. And this one, of course, is wonderful because you have cats in all different scenes around the world. New Zealand, the Yucatan, uh, San Francisco. Looks like there's 35 pages. There's also a number of two-page spreads. For anyone who ever wondered what it'd be like if cats were in the world. They couldn't do any worse than us, could they? <laughs> And there is Michelle's one pessimistic quote of the day. <laughs> anyway, here's the title page. A copyright page. And then it says illustrated by. This is a work of fiction. All cats, events, and incidents are either the products of the author's imagination or used in a fictitious manner. Any resemblance to actual cats, living or dead, or actual events is purely coincidental. Boy, I hope that was wrote in jest. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I really hope it was. Here is a nameplate page. A test page, which is always nice. Now, I believe she also, these are all single-sided pages again, which is awesome. And I believe her books also do, even though they're Amazon printed, also do the thing where if they're double page spreads, like here, um, the opposite pages are blank. But she does note where these locations are too, which I really like. The bustling streets of, of somewhere in Rome, <laughs> we'll just say, somewhere in Rome. So there we go. Love it. There's a little bit of shading here and there. Um, drawing your gelato toppings. A few little fun pages here and there as well. Some single-sided pages. I love this page. Just the look on his face where he loses the helmet. And the little ears on the helmet. And it just... It's so wonderful. I love it. Aren't these gorgeous? so gorgeous. I think, again, it would be a combination. Like, a lot of places here I could see myself using marker, but I would probably use, like, gel pens. I definitely need some colored pencils in here as well. Like, this one where he's laying on all the different cushions and the other cat, it seems. Well, at least one cat. There's a tail buried under there, too. So, yeah, there definitely would need to be some colored pencil and fine liner work in some of these. Yucatan Peninsula. I love how they're fishing and then he's underneath scuba diving. I don't know. It's just something just really mesmerizing about her pictures. This one's wonderful. Wonderful. I love these pictures and they scare me. This is one of those things where I love I love the pictures, but they're also kind of intimidating and scary to me, even though they shouldn't be. And of course, they're going to have some of the cats fishing. I just love the cultural aspect of this book, too. You get to see so many different things, so many different styles and places. I've always wanted to really travel. Like, this year would have not been the year to do that. Her Leroy. Oh, love it. Love cat puns. No feathered cats in here as far as I know. <laughs> Definitely some cat puns. Um, beautiful cat drawings. Cats, cats as people. This really should come no surprise at this point how much I love these books. This one's pretty, like, it's mostly a black page, but I could still see coloring this, and you could still do some pretty cool things with the black backing there. I don't know, this is just very visually appealing to me, even though it's not, like here, very visually appealing. There's not a lot to actually color, but I could see myself coloring these 
with like yellows and greens and just they're just very visually appealing I guess kiwi birds look at him laying on that bird that's so what uh, I could see Oreo doing that Painting elephants. Yeah, no, I have always really wanted to travel. My husband's not much of a traveler, so my brother and I tend to be the ones that want to travel. And we, we have some big dreams of places to go, but obviously um, right now we're not going anywhere. We didn't even get to go to our convention this year. And that was, that was very disappointing. The Whisker Fisker boat. That's hilarious. Love that. And instead of just a white background, you actually have some real light shading there with the trees and like the mountains. I like, I just, I like that. A little bit more challenging the color, I would say these pages are, definitely. They're not, I would not say this is something to take lightly. These are what I would put in as project pages, which is probably why none of them are colored yet. Oh man. Maybe I should do a running cat theme for next year. Maybe all next year we're just going to do a year long color along that's cat themed. And at least once a month I have to color in one of my intimidating cat books. Like that would be a good challenge for myself. I have to think about it. Anyway, gorgeous book. I do plan on coloring in these books, but you know, sometimes you just get charmed by the art itself and it's just, you, you just love the art. You Coloring, not coloring, you just love looking at the art and that is how I feel about this book. I could just look at this book every week and just find little things I hadn't found before. And the fact that it's Kyote Press, I love because one of my cats, his name was Kyote. I feel, I feel like there's some divine intervention <laughs> So anyway, this is um, probably her most complex book out of the four I have. That was my latest one I got of hers. Cat Mandalas. For those of us that um, may need something a little simpler, I think a lot of you would like this book. Um, and y'all know I'm not a big Mandala fan. And it is really a shock I haven't colored in this yet because... I, I do see myself coloring in this this month. Um, this is also by Eva Career. That's what the back looks like. These are not super complicated mandalas, but they are all cat mandalas. I love it. It's never been more fun to go in circles. I love her sense of humor in her books too. Like her little uh, quote here. I think that's great. This was 2020. So this was the one she released this year. Um, you can actually color this page. This double page spread here too. Another test page. I like how she includes little doodles on the blank pages. Um, like nothing's really blank. There's always something on her pages. Which I think, I think is different. It's again very visually appealing. But anyway, these are not crazy complicated mandalas but they feature cats and they are just so stinking cute y'all so stinking cute i think that's the one from the cover and then she has little bitty drawings on the other side these are my style mandalas right here i generally don't like really complicated ones oh, this one i love because this looks so simple but it's so cute the giant fluffy cats with the little bows. And then you get the opposite here. You get the big bows with the little cats. So, so cute. Ice cream cone cats. Cats and cupcakes. That that is a winning combo in my opinion. It's been a long week. I am so tired. I am craving 
junk food like nobody's business. There they are flying kites. Yeah, let me zoom in just a little. I'm sorry guys. I didn't realize these are um, pretty small. This is pretty small print so might have been a little hard to see these. You have the kitty cat toppers on the wedding cakes. The cat weather vanes. But yeah, no, this is this is super adorable. Oh, here is a double page spread. It's not mandalas. It's still fun. Little cats on the parachutes and in the balloons. Oh, see, I got back out for this one. There we go. This is not, this is not super fine, super dark line art, I guess, as you can see. So some of you that like that may not, may not be a fan of that in this particular book. Really like the fishing one. The cat buses. This one's cool because all the cats are slightly different. And they're all, the some of them are doing different stuff too. Actually, it's this one. So this is the genius out of all of them. The rest of them all have C is for cat. And then his has like E equals MC squared. So he must be the smart one of the bunch. But they're all cute. They're all reading storybooks. Some of these I like because um, a lot of these, they all look the same like this. But in a couple of those I just showed you, like the cats are colored. They have different patterns. It's like here, they all have different patterns on them. And I think that's cool. This is a good autumn one. I can't believe I hadn't noticed this one till now. Well, you see how many books. You see. You've actually got little dogs in this one, too. You see how many books I have. I mean, I guess it's probably not a big stretch to realize that I forget about some of these. And here they are playing in their little band and singing the songs of their people, no less. Love the little hat pom pom hats on this one. And then this one is a good winter Christmassy one. And here's another one. It would be interesting. You probably want to use like maybe some pastel out here because you've got like the little white snowflakes. And just have it kind of fade out. That might be a fun way to play with some pastel. Meow, 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 meow. Anyway, super cute. And this shows, um, actually, the next book we're going to be showing, too. Alright, there we go. Now we have two different Cats and Flowers books. There's a volume one and a volume two. This was the very first book I got by Eva Career. And um, again, Amazon printed. Don't forget to stop and smell the roses and pet the cats. Now, I do like me some Cats and Flowers. That seems like a really good um, combination, in my opinion. Here he is again. The this is a title page and copyright page that you can color if you like. Your nameplate page. These are all single sided. I believe the line art in here is a little bit darker. This is a test page if you like. Each of these shows um, what type of flowers in there. So if you're one that likes to color flowers similar to how they're colored in real life, this will be very helpful if you're not familiar with what the flowers look like. So she does have a border around these two. So for those of you that like having the borders, this is probably be more appealing. The line art's a little darker. And I love, I love it. I love the flowers. I love the the way the cats are drawn, the expressions on some of their faces. Some of them are scenery. Some of them are just the cats drawn with the with the flowers. And some of them are freeform where you don't have the hard edge on them. 
these I could see using markers like I would like to try markers and pencils I feel in this book would be very nice very nice this one <laughs> Him in the in the it looks like a crocodile, you know, floating in the in the water. That look on his face, I love it. Where he's stretching with the bird's paradise, it's just beautiful. I don't know, it's just that one reminds me of Annie right there. Lots reminded me of her today, which isn't a bad thing. That would be a pretty one to do with the sunflowers for like an autumn. He looks very suspicious of those bees. Like, dude, I would not recommend swatting them. Would not recommend it. Love the raindrops in this one. The succulents picture. Oh, man. This is one I really want to do. I've been kind of interested in succulents lately. I don't know, just like the colors of them, and I know some people collect them, and it would be difficult to have something like that here, just because obviously they tend to like warmer weather, and I'd have to keep them in the house and away from the cats, and yeah, I just, I don't know. It would ever be realistic for me, or just, um, just, um, admiring from afar other people's the kitties with the roses these aren't overly complex pictures but see this is where like I said I would love to do a marker base and then come in shading with some pencils to really make like the flowers in, in the kitty pop Ooh, pumpkins and mums. That would be a good fall one. It's like, Michelle, you don't need anything else to have to color right now. Mystery flowers. Look at him winking. I <laughs> love this one with just the tail. It's not just a cat sitting next to a flower in every picture, right? Like, there's there's artistry to it, like how the cats are drawn along with the flowers. Here's a really pretty, in my opinion, double page spread. That would be fun to color. As much as I love her books, I have not colored in any of them, y'all. This is, it's kind of like what happened with Marjorie Sarnet. I just got to make myself start coloring in them. This is Cats and Flowers Volume 2 that came out, I think, this year. It's 25 pages in here. Title page. This is the last book we have for this portion. Yeah, this was this year. I, that's what I thought. I think this one's actually a double page spread later in the book, but you could color this page as well if you like. Nameplate page. The pretty black and white kitty. So all her books follow a very similar format, and then you get like your test page there. And again, you get fun little doodles and stuff on the blank pages, which I love. They're all um, one-sided. And then you get the the names again these are more of a gray and the border in this one's more of a light gray but you still get your get your hard border if you so choose well this one would be a job for me for markers to like if i want to leave all the daisies white to color the background and avoid bleed it bleed because this is amazon paper so that would be that would be a bit of a challenge Very fascinated by that butterfly. Eh. So pretty. That one would, I could see coloring like Scamper or Reepicheep maybe. And again, she does include like for some of them tabby stripes or little spots and stuff. If you get nervous about like you know, adding features and details to your cats. She does give um, 
And I could just color them like a solid color too and ignore that. But she does give you um, some stripes and stuff as a guide if you're uncomfortable with that. Hydrangea. <laughs> All posing for a picture. Some of them not doing as well as others. Oh, here's a cute little double page spread, which, you know, if you just wanted to color down here and kind of fade it out, it wouldn't, wouldn't take very long at all. It's very pretty. Day lilies. Like, I could see definitely doing some, like, neutral browns on this tabby or some neutral grays and then really doing, like, some orange pop on the day lilies there. Here's one that's more, just goes all the way to the border of the page. Daffodils. Yeah, see, like, I know there are plants that are poisonous to cats. Actually, I believe lilies are one of the things that are poisonous to the cat to cats. And while I think most outdoor cats probably have enough sense not to, um... <laughs> look at the smug look on his face. He's like, I didn't do it. And he's like, I totally did it. But, um... Oh, that one's so pretty. Love it. Um... I know most cats outside probably have enough sense. You get a little bit of grayscale in this background. Have enough sense not to eat the plants. The cats in the house, I'm telling y'all, if I bring anything green in this house, they eat it. Um, I love this little cart. They eat, They try to eat it. I remember bringing in a plant one time, setting it on the counter, walking outside to get something else from the car, and by the time I come in, which was about 30 to 45 seconds, Maggie had jumped up on the counter and already eaten, like, at least one of the leaves. And it wasn't poisonous. So I even called the vet to make sure. But. <laughs> this one, the line art isn't, like I said, there's a little more gray scale, kind of light shading in some of this. So this isn't quite as dark lined as the volume one. So do keep that in mind if that bothers you. Oh, and then here's that double page spread I was talking about, which is adorable. It's kind of like the first thing I want to color in here. Boy, I don't know. I gotta think about it. <laughs> anyway, adorable. Since she had two books come out this year, she is definitely still working on coloring books, and I am super excited to see what she comes out with next. She's definitely one of my favorites by far um, at this point. So anyway... Today has been, <laughs> like Minka's journey, today has been a bit of a journey um, with the books. So this is part three. Now I have to do the description. <laughs> oh, goody. Um, next week, just as a heads up, next week's, I believe, is going to be most of my Creative Haven Dover cat-related collection. And then at the end of the month, we're going, or the last Flip Do Friday, um cat related we're going to round out with a lot of um like my sun life drawing my jade summer books that are cat related and um that will round us out for the month so um yeah i need to work on the description i need to work on the other video i said i was going to do today um that might actually be tomorrow if you don't see it on the site obviously i haven't published it yet <laughs> um that's why you do this stuff in order michelle Hopefully have a color and chat Sunday or Monday, probably Sunday night, and we'll go from there. So thanks guys, and bye for now.